Ovannes Kaçaznuni, 1918 yılında kurulan Ermenistan'ın ilk başbakanıdır. 1923 yılında Bükreş'te toplanan Taşnak Sütyum Partisi Genel Kurulu'na 108 sayfalık bir rapor sundu. Öz eleştiri içeren raporun Ermenistan'da yayınlanması yasaklandı. Çeşitli dillerdeki basınları Avrupa kütüphanelerinden toplatıldı ve yok edildi. İzleyeceğiniz belgesel bu rapordan esinlenerek hazırlanmıştır. 1915 olaylarının 100. yılında hiçbir şey karanlıkta kalmasın. İnsanlar Aveli Zanrer Grel Yevstora Grel Ayskoska Kante Samarlısel Ayt İmberaniç Asacız teteva mıdıçun kam pokur hokuçun Ancuğa ki dramatruçun neri kam hapçep yezrakatuçun neri artun kıçe Ayskoska Hor hamuzun ki yev hor Kidak tutyan artunke. Kanzi ay kanov vor kanov vor yes hamuz vazem. Yev ayn çap iharge vor çap yes intunakem kidak celu u imbernelu duruçunu. Dadelu yev intruçun anelu. Voru insmut dvacure. Yezraka tüçün ners, laynoren himnavorelu hamar, mez garikem zgum, tarmasnelu, ayn zer hişoğu tünneri mez, hay kakakakan dadi abraç boruş pulere. Sıksaç mez badirazmiç, minçev lozani konferansı u hayot harçun, Taşnak çakan kusak tüçyan kadar aç yev unetsaç dere ayet zamanaka hat bacu. Anadolu'da gereyan ettiği anlatılan olayların kökeninde Osmanlı Devleti'ni zaafa uğratan dış mihrakların olumsuz etkilerinin yok sayılması birçok sorunun irdelenmesinde yardımcı olamayacağı gibi sorunları daha da çözümsüz ve karmaşık hale getireceği muhakkaktır. Anadolu toprağı asırlardan beri var olan Türk-Ermeni ilişkilerinin beşiğidir. Bu ilişkilerin tarihi ise bu beşikte birlikte büyümüş, birlikte yaratmış, Birlikte birçok olumlu gelişmelere imza atmış iki çocuğun yaşam hikayesidir. Ne yazık ki 20. yüzyılın ilk yarısında 1. Dünya Savaşı'nın acı dolu günlerinde cereyan eden olumsuz olayların bu iki çocuğun ilişkilerinde bir kırılma noktası oluşturduğuna tarih ilmi tanıklık etmektedir. Do you hear the crackling? They lost the Balkans. There is a big carcass at our feet. It's not a carcass, Your Excellency. It's a big treasure waiting to be shared. General, we shall share our plan with the honorable allies. This is a grand territory, Your Excellency. It's complicated and grand, but hindered. An empire without legs or arms. An empire made up of Istanbul and Istanbul only. It is complicated and multifaced, Your Excellency. Mr. Churchill has ordered a plan to cross Dardanelles. We shall conquer Sultan City and claim the paralyzed state. What about the Bosphorus, Mr. Churchill? In the presence of His Excellency, we give you an assurance on that matter. The territories of Egypt and the Persian Gulf, surely Mosul as well, be handed over to England. His Excellency shall confirm. Gentlemen, our strategy should be preventing the Ottoman army gather troops at one place. Line of actions taken by the Russian and Armenian forces is vital. Armenians could distract the Ottoman army. 
about the arms which are to be distributed to the Armenians. A center on Tbilisi, South Azerbaijan and East Mediterranean is being constructed. While the British Navy sail towards Istanbul, Armenians shall cross the border to steal the Ottomans. Simultaneous rebellions. What's important is to force Ottomans or the large army at the east. Uh, Mr. Churchill, in case your navy make its way to Istanbul, what next? If this is about the bell, consider it on the top of the Hagia Sophia. We are not here to discuss dreams, Mr. Churchill. What happens when... As we mentioned earlier, His Excellency has agreed to let Russia control the Armenian territory. It is time for the ill man to rest easy. You may execute the plan. September 23rd, 1914, three months after the beginning of World War I. The Ottoman Empire has not entered the war yet. The third political office of the Tsarist Russia sends a telegraph to the Russian ambassador, Gears, in Istanbul. The Supreme Commander and Governor of Caucasia agree that it is the perfect time for the preparations of the Armenian, Assyrian, and Kurdish rebellions in case of a war with Turkey. The distribution of the available arms will be made just when needed. There is no shortage of funds. The bands will be mobilized with our permission only. Debo yaptılar. Bir metre boyunda 50 santim genişliğinde. İçerisini doldurdular. Silah, cephana, üzerine gaz doldurdular. Çünkü bize gaz, masa bir Rusya'dan gelirdi. Bizim yoktu. Develerle gelirdi. İki tane o debolar bir deve yüküydü. Orada yükleri çıkardılar. Bu meseleleri, silahları, mermileri, gazları getirdi. Eski şehirde. Şeylere, belediyelerde, esnaflara, esnaflar satardı. Ermeniler işte bu şekilde silahlandılar. O zaman Rus hükümetine dediler ki biz silahlandık. Siz artık dişten biz de işten bırakalım. Ta Muş'a kadar Van Gölü'nün etrafındaki olan gazalara hepsine Ermeniler silah gönderdiler. Tamamıyla silahlandılar. Let us now show you what went on on the Eastern Front with the help of a new document, a document from the Armenian archives. Tbilisi, October 29th, 1915. A joint report written during the war by the head of the Tbilisi branch of the Dashnak party, Alexander Ivanovich, the chairman of the Armenian Central Committee, Samson Stepanovich Arutiunov, and Bishop Mesero. Because the inevitability of the war has become crystal clear within the Armenian leaders, the band leaders from the oppressed regions of Turkey and other volunteers started to pour into Caucasia. Turkish Armenians, who completely believed in Russian victory, seeked Russia, for whom they fostered a great hope as their savior. Yet, Turks tried to pull the Armenians to their side in any opportunity they found. They had meetings with them in Istanbul, Erzurum, Ban, and Mush. Armenian people decided to side with another country. They handed their destiny over to Great Russia's power and protection. They began to organize brigades to participate in the Liberation War side by side with the glorious Caucasian army. When the war began, actually, the Ottoman intelligence and the, uh, the conscription officers who were going around trying to make sure that people did their duty and enrolled in the army, Armenians were supposed to be in the army as well, they found that in that entire region that you see there, they found that there were virtually no Armenian young men who were able to serve because they had all left. They had either gone to Russia and joined the Russian troops, or else they had created bands called Chete bands, bands of guerrillas, in the area to fight the Ottomans. The plan was clear. If there was to be a war with Russia, these brigades were going to fight alongside the Russian army, behind the front lines of the Ottoman army. Recruitment of volunteers started at the beginning of September 1914. After this, thousands of Armenian insurgents from the eastern Anatolian towns, from Romania, Egypt, even from the United States of America, 
enlisted in the Russian Caucasian army gathering in Tbilisi. The number of Armenians who joined these brigades to fight against the Turks reached over 200,000 during the war. Volunteer units were sent off to the war zones with religious ceremonies and festivities. Six brigades were created from these fighters who had been made ready in a short time. They were prepared almost like an organized army. They had sanitary troops, even a musical band. So these are Ottoman citizens in Russia, armed and equipped and trained and put in Russian uniforms for the purpose of helping the Russians invade the Ottoman Empire. There are four or five of these things, Jerzynes. The most famous is led by a great military leader, Antronik. The insurgent leader, Antranik, who had fought for the Bulgarian army during the Balkan Wars, was leading the first brigade that reached over 3,000 fighters. This brigade started to move from the city of Kulfa in the Iranian territory towards Bashkale and Van. The second brigade took off from Yerevan under the command of Dro the brigand towards Van via Udr and Obeazit. The third brigade under the command of Amazasp gathered in Kagizman and headed for Malazgirts and Bitlis via the Aleskert Valley. The fourth brigade under the command of Keri the brigand from Erzurum started off from Sarakumush towards Erzurum. Ermeni gönüllü birliklerinin komutanlarına baktığımızda bunların Ermeni çetelerinde veya Rusya'da faaliyet yürütmüş teröristler olduklarını görüyoruz. Devlet yetkililerine karşı, valilere karşı, askeri yetkililere karşı çeşitli suikastler gerçekleştiriliyor. Duro olsun, diğer e, Ermeni çetelerinin e, liderleri olsun, komutanları olsun Ermeni gönüllü birliklerinin komutanları için özel bir af çıkartılıyor. Ve bunlar dışarıya salınıyorlar. Ve bu Ermeni çetelerinin örgütlenmesi işine soyunuyorlar. Dro, after 1920, he went to Moscow. He spent some years in Moscow. He went to Romania, and eventually he sided with the Nazi regime, largely for ideological reasons. He led an Armenian unit of the Wehrmacht. He was also an agent of German uh, military intelligence service. And in 1945, he saved his life by becoming an agent of the American military intelligence. And after the civilian CIA was established, he became a CIA agent. So he fled to America and he finished his life between America and Lebanon, mostly, working for the American intelligence service. He died in uh, 1956. While these preparations were being made in the Eastern Front, an event which was to change the course of history and the war in general was taking place on the Western Front of the Ottoman Empire. April 25, 1915. British and French forces, mainly composed of Anzac soldiers, succeeded in disembarking on the Gallipoli Peninsula at five different points. Two months before this, they had tried to pass through the Dardanelles with their massive battleships, but had met with strong resistance of the Ottoman army. Their target was Istanbul, the heart of the empire. Let us go back to the Eastern Front again, just 10 days before the landing of the British Anzac troops in Gallivolu. April 15th, 1915. Armed Armenian insurgent groups started a big uprising in Van, the easternmost city of the empire. Everything was working according to plan. In Van, when the Russians managed to break the Ottoman lines and attack in the east, when the Russians managed to win the war in the east, I believe, and many other historians believe, they were able to do that because of the Armenian revolt. The Armenians in Vaughan revolted. They seized the city of Vaughan. They held it against their own government until the Russians could come down. The Russian army captured Vaughan on May 16th without firing a single bullet. Because of the Armenian uprising, 
there was not a single Ottoman soldier left to fight. When the Russians received the key of the city from the Dashnak bands, the city was fully purged of Muslims and even Jews. It was in ruins. <laughs> The size of the massacre was such that there was only 3,000 people left in the city of Van, the population of which had already been reduced to 70,000 people due to the war. When the Russian army was approaching Van, the governor orders the entire Muslim population of Van, both Turks and Kurds, to leave the town. And this is an event that is known among people still in Van as the Buk Kachkin, the great escape, the great flight. I met in the 80s some survivors of that flight and interviewed them. I remember one man that I talked to, 33 members of his family uh, had embarked on this flight. And I said, what did you eat? He said, I said, were you provided with bread and drinking water? He said, no. These haivan gibi otladik, we grazed like animals. Now that's the same story that you hear or heard from Armenians who survived the relocation. Wallahi ot, ot topluyordu, ot sıkıyordu, duz elimize geçmiyordu. Duzsuz ot ye ye tak Diyarbakir'e gittik. Diyarbakir'de bir hastalık düştü, öyle gün olurdu ki 150 tane insan ölürdü. The Russian army, which established its military headquarters in Van, continued advancing west. Concurrent with this advancement, Armenian uprisings were breaking out in many places, the main ones being in Zeytun, Maraş, Kayseri, Bitlis, Urfa, Iskenderun, and Adana. The illustration demonstrating the attacks on the Ottoman soldiers was published in 1895 in a French magazine. The report drawn up by Samuel Edelman. The United States Vice Consul in Aleppo contains information which can help us understand what had happened in the uprising in Urfa. In addition to the Ottoman Armenians, other Armenians scattered in other parts of the world also got organized to fight against the Ottomans alongside the Entente forces. Based on the reports of the Muslim population being killed by the Armenians, it was reported that an extensive search for weapons initiated in Urfa and that Armenians were arrested. Two police officers shot dead during a search for weapons triggered the Kurds to arm and take action against the Armenian neighborhoods. Despite their hate toward the Armenians, the police did their job very well, but were not sufficient in numbers to prevent the events. There are a number of acts of violence that occur. Ottoman officials are assassinated. So there are a number of what today would be called terrorist activities designed to interdict or cut the lines of communication. 2,000 young men were daily transferred to the Gallipoli front of the Ottoman Empire. The male population in Anatolia had almost perished. Even lads of 15 years of age had been sent to the front. Behind the front lines, there was nothing else left but the training quarters of the novices. The Ottoman army, caught between two fires, had to endure the reality that its communication lines between the eastern and western fronts were cut off. Its railways, bridges and roads were sabotaged. Even convoys carrying the injured were being attacked. These were steps planned right before the war. Here is an article published in the Daily Areve and sent to the Damascus branch of the Dashnak Tsutyun. If the Ottoman army crosses the border and the Ottoman forces begin to retreat, all forces from all sides will uprise for revolution, making use of every tool by all means. The Ottoman army will be caught between two fires. All public buildings will be blown up with bombs while keeping the Ottoman forces occupied and blocking their supply and ammunition routes. The cartoon published in a British newspaper in 1876 sufficiently shows the methods Europe employed to dismember the Ottoman Empire. The key to understanding everything that happens in 1915 is based on logistics. 
So if you go back to 1915, there are Ottoman armies fighting in Caucasia, near Sarakamish, near Kars. There are Ottoman armies in Mesopotamia, and there are Ottoman armies in Palestine. All of the logistics, all of the supplies, ammunition, food for those armies comes on roads and railroads all the way from Constantinople or Istanbul. If those lines of communications that go back to Istanbul are cut, that means that no supplies. The Armenian revolutionary committees have active cells in many of the eastern cities that are directly on these lines of communications or the roads. This is how James Gerard, the former United States ambassador to Germany, summarized the role of the Armenian bands in the war. The Armenians contributed to the victory in the First World War. They stalled the German-Turkish troops on their 250-mile Caucasian front with their forces of 50,000 people, preventing their passage to Central Asia. The army had been defeated in Sarikamish. There are Armenian legions coming over with the Russian army. There's the Van Rising. There are all sorts of little episodes around in eastern Anatolia. You can very well see how they would say, look, uh, move the Armenian population. I and mean, the Russians were doing the same sort of thing on a smaller scale on their side of the line. The first precaution to be taken was to transport the Armenians in the Zeytun and Marash regions to Konya. Then the committee cells were raided. The searches around the country revealed that the Armenians were preparing for a general uprising. Let us go back to the day before the Entente soldiers landed in Gallipoli. April 24, 1915, the Interior Minister Talat Pasha, on behalf of the Ottoman Empire, takes the decision which has been the subject of much controversy. All the Armenian committees within the Empire's borders are closed down. 235 leaders of the organizations Dajnak Zutyon, Hinchak and Rangavar are arrested in Istanbul on the charge of undertaking criminal activities against the state. But none of the Ottoman Armenians living in the city of Istanbul, who were around 77,735 people according to the birth registry records, were detained. The coded telegram sent to Admiral Calthorpe, the British High Commissioner, at the end of the war said, The Armenians arrested were the Armenian volunteers who had been serving the Allied armies or the instigators of the Muslim massacres. The Ottoman Empire was an empire. It was made up of, you know, different groups of Christians, Jews, uh, Greeks, Armenians, Bulgarians, Bosnia, whatever. And for most of its 600-year history, these groups lived more or less peacefully together, in some periods extremely so. I can't even recall the number of Armenian ambassadors, Armenian ministers in the government. Uh, it was extremely large. Among all of the non-Muslim peoples, ruled by the Ottoman Empire. The only ones who spoke Turkish were the Armenians. When American missionaries began coming into the Ottoman Empire in the 1830s, one of the things they did was translate the Bible into Armenian, only to discover that nobody could read it. Because, and then they had to translate it into Turkish. <laughs> I think the Ottomans gave uh, uh, gave uh, assurances of autonomy if they fought on Ottoman, on the Ottoman side early in the in the First World War. But at, at the same time, it looked like the Ottoman Empire was going to collapse. It was going to be carved up by the imperialist powers. And particularly, Russia was going to have a big influence in the region. So the Armenian nationalists would have concluded that this was their moment of opportunity. Of course, by doing that, they took a great gamble. They took the gamble that if the imperialist powers, if Russia, if, if England, if France did not win, um, if they did not crush the Ottoman Empire, and if they did not 
help them construct an Armenian state, it would, be, it would spell immense trouble for, the, for their own people in the region. They took that gamble and obviously they lost. Menk baderaz mic khusapelu hamar zerkneridz yegaz amenin çareting. Iverço an kakhuçan hamar turkeri het aveli kan ipriyev intanur lezu gadnelu hamar aravela guynuz jang betke gorza dreying. Ay aistek betke da aneying. Sakal çaretink. Yev bana nranun ne vor baderazmiz çeyink vahenun. Kanzi vıstaheyink haktanagin. İrabez desank vor menk eyink uzun ayt baderazbe. Sahmanlerum arten razmakan gorzogu çunere sıkseleyin. Yerp Türkerin araçar geçin banak çütünler. Sakayın mejretsin karaçar nere. Da mimmez hansa gor çütüner. Vokç depkın u gorzı an nereli yer. Menk voçinç çaretin orbesi husapeyin baderazmiz. Yev ıntakaragı menk mer zerkerov hangetsirin the decision determining the fate of all the peoples living together with Armenians in Anatolia was taken by the ultranationalist Armenians in Erzurum. The Dashnags held a convention in Erzurum in the summer of 1914, right before the war. Not all Dashnaks want to achieve independence, but enough do so that by the summer of 1914, a significant portion of the leadership of the Dashnak party are committed to when war comes helping the Russians, helping the British, helping the French and raising a rebellion in eastern Anatolia. The Ottoman government was aware of the agreements they had made with the Russians and the British and their preparation for a general uprising. He sent representatives to the convention as a warning to the Armenian committees to explain the harm that could come to the Armenian people if they started an uprising and helped the enemy. The precautions, warnings, arrests and the raids in the arsenals could not dissuade the Armenians from preparing for a general revolt. Enver Pasha sent a critical telegram to the Minister of Internal Affairs, Talat Pasha, on May 2, 1915. Efendim, İngilizler Kirte'de yeni bir taarruz başlatmış. Taarruzun sol kanadına dört İngiliz Tugayı, sağ kanadına ise iki Fransız Tugayı katılmış. Savunmamız İngiliz taarruzları karşısında tutunurken Fransız kesiminde yarılma noktasına gelmiş. Kafkas cephesindeki telgraf iletişimi kurabildiğimiz yerlerden de iyi haberler alamıyoruz efendim. Elimizde Trakya'da tuttuğumuz geri birlik var. Hayır, o birlikleri kaydıramayız. Çanakkale'den İstanbul'a yürümeleri ihtimaline karşı hazır halde bulunmalılar. Hatta takviye edilmeliler. Ne yani? Koca imparatorluk tebaasını koruyamayacak mı? Efendim, durumu zorlaştıran... Paşam, acil kodlu bir telgraf var. Enver Paşa'dan. Oku evladım. Ayaklanan Ermeniler ordunun hareketlerini engellemektedir. Toplu halde bulunan Ermenilerin buralardan çıkarılarak isyan yuvalarının dağıtılması düşüncesindeyim. Üçüncü Ordu Komutanlığı'nın verdiği bilgiye göre Ruslar 20 Nisan 1915 tarihinde kendi sınırları içindeki Müslümanları sefil ve perişan bir halde sınırlarımızdan içeriye sokmuşlardır. Hem buna karşılık vermiş olmak hem de yukarıda bahsettiğim amacı sağlamak için ya bu Ermenileri aileleriyle birlikte Rus sınırı içine göndermek ya da bu Ermeni ailelerini Anadolu içinde çeşitli yerlere dağıtmak gereklidir. Bu iki şekilden uygun olanının seçilmesiyle tatbikini rica ederim. Beyler, Anadolu'da tutunabilmek için başka çaremiz kalmadı.
The second preemptive measure, which has been the heart of the controversy up to the present day, took shape in this meeting. Relocation, as it is known to the public, in other words, the Transportation and Settlement Act. This act, which was passed on May 27, 1915, gave the army the authority to relocate and resettle the inhabitants of villages or towns who might be suspected of treason and espionage due to military reasons. The Ottoman army deployed to the fronts. It was fighting the British in Mesopotamia and Palestine. It was fighting the Russians on the Caucasian frontier. And on April 25th, 1915, the army has to fight the British, the French, and the Australians at Gallipoli, Chinakli, Savash. So the problem is that, that when the Armenian acts of violence, the small rebellions start in central Anatolia, the army is not there to go after the guerrillas as they had in previous rebellions. Therefore, how do you deal with the guerrillas? Turkey is shot. Kaç gideyin inçenanun yev hedavabar voç mi zıgçum ait baccarov çuneyin. Aveli uş haskaçvec iharge bor Türkiye'yüm ait boruşumu amena çışkritner yev himnıvacer amena hamabadaskan metodneri voru himnovin yev ant mişt Kılıcer Haykakan Hart. 1915 yıllarda Ermeniler arasında çıkan ayrılıkçı örgütlerin Türk ordusunu arkadan vurduğunu anlatan Fransa eski genelkurmay başkanı Oray Lankansi bugün hayatta kalmalarını Türkler'e borçlular. Buyurun. 16 Mayıs 2005 tercüman. Lütfen bunu göster mi? Hayatta kalmalarını kime borçlular? Bize bu tarafa, borçlular. bu tarafa. Lütfen hepiniz alın. Who gets taken to the camps? They tend to be Orthodox Armenians with strong ties to the Russians. They tend to come from these provinces. So this relocation is tailored, it's controlled. <coughs> 350,000 Armenians in 1918 are still living in their original homes, not in the black provinces, but over here in the western provinces. So 350,000 people are, are unaffected by this. How come? Because they weren't thought to be a threat to the army. Regarding Edemish, I found a report of the French Navy's intelligence service saying that the armaments of Edemish prospered even during the war because they were unmolested. So they did not suffer at all during the war. The Ottoman Armenians right behind the front lines were transported to more secure locations in the empire, away from the front lines to Aleppo and Damascus. Now they were away from the regions of uprising and from the dangers the war brought. However, the Ottomans were fighting on many fronts, therefore internal security was enfeebled. Every convoy of those Armenians who were being sent to Syria they should be sent in groups of 200 people. There should be all measures taken to secure uh, the properties they left behind. They should be provided adequate food and water. And for every convoy of 200 deportees, there should be 12 gendarmes escorting them. Right? Well, there were no gendarmes left in Anatolia. After the disaster at the Battle of Sarakamish, where somewhere between 60 and 80,000 Ottoman troops from the Third Army, I believe, froze in one night, all of the gendarmes who had the responsibility for local police work in central and eastern Anatolia were drafted into the army. Resolutions followed resolutions to transport people to their destinations in the safest possible way. For example, a letter sent to the Ottoman troops demands that the migrants, if necessary, be fed with soldiers' rations. Ox carts are provided for many families who did not have any means of transportation. However, the state authority had been weakened due to fights on multiple fronts. 
Moreover, the violence that was perpetrated on the Muslim population by the Armenian bands had paved the way for the conditions of a civil war. The explosive atmosphere was open to every kind of intervention. Indeed, some convoys were attacked by the local gangs as the people were proceeding. Osmanlı Devleti Ermeni yurttaşlarımıza karşı uygulamalarda Ermeni toplumunu toptan yok etme amacıyla hareket etmemiştir. Bununla birlikte Birinci Dünya Savaşı sırasında karşılıklı Kırım ve zorla göç ettirme olduğunu her zaman belirttim. Ermenileri değil, büyük devletleri sorumlu tuttuk. The architect of the resolution for relocation, the interior minister Talat Pasha, immediately orders investigation and severe punishment of the attackers. Some authorities who are inefficient are dismissed and punished. A total of 1,673 persons are court-martialed at the end of the investigations, and 62 officials and soldiers are condemned to death. Including an Ottoman governor. They weren't perfect, a lot of people got away, no doubt about it. But how many Armenians or Russians who killed Turks, how many of them were ever tried and convicted? None. La question arménienne n'existe plus. The Armenian issue is no more. Okay, Talat Pasha says la question arménienne n'existe plus. But what does it mean? It means I sent orders to prevent new violence against the relocated Armenians. So I consider that the issue is finished. So what he said was exactly the opposite. They completely inverted the meaning of this German document. And I give you one example, but I could speak with you doing a full or only with the main distortion of evidence. Distorting authentic record is a recurrent way uh, in the uh, Armenian and poor Armenian literature. Gerçek olmayan. Hatta çürütülmüş kanıtlardan bir tanesi de Washington Holocaust Müzesi'nde yer alan Hitler'e atfedilen o meşhur söylev Hitler. O söyleve göre bugün Ermenilere yapılan katliamı kim hatırlıyor ki demiş. Ancak müzede bu Adolf Hitler söylemiş şeklinde yer almıyor. Associated Press Berlin Büro Şefi Louis Lehner'e atfen diye yer alıyor. Bu bir müzede olabilecek bir şey değil. Müzede satılan kitaplardan bir tanesinde diyordu ki e, Ermenilere verilen bir sözden dolayı bu yer almaktadır. Ben bu sözün altında ne olduğunu çok merak ettim. Araştırdım, araştırdım, araştırdım. En sonunda Kongre Kütüphanesi'nde bir kitap buldum. Ve orada çok açık bir şekilde bu müzede bunun yer alması, almaması üzerine çok büyük kavgalar oldu. Bir sürü istifalar oldu. En sonunda Jimmy Carter'ın Birleşmiş Milletler İnsan Hakları'na göndermiş olduğu Ermeni asıllı Set Mumcian bu söylevin müzede yer alması için 1 milyon dolar bağışta bulunuyor. Son derece basit kendinize bir şey sorun. Hitler'in eğitimi neydi? Yani adamı tarihçi, inanılmaz bir uzman havasına sokuyorsunuz. Hitler demiş ki <gülüyor> diye başlıyorsunuz. O zaman sayın Hitler demek lazım. 6 milyon insanı katlediyor ve siz onu kalkıp da sırf uyduruk bir söyleviden dolayı farklı bir yere koyuyorsunuz. Bu bir insanlık suçudur, bir ırkı. Siz kalkıyorsunuz, karalıyorsunuz. The massacre of the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire was the same as what happened to the Jews in Nazi Germany. And that is a downright falsehood. To make this a parallel with the Holocaust in Germany, you would have to assume that the Jews of Germany had been engaged in an armed rebellion against the German state collaborating with the Allies against Germany, that in the deportation order, the cities of Hamburg and Berlin were exempted, uh, that persons in the employment of the state were exempted, and the deportation only applied to the Jews of Germany proper, so that when they got to Poland, they were welcomed and sheltered by the Polish Jews. This seems to me a rather absurd parallel. The First World War was a period when infectious diseases stalked every town and village in Anatolia and the vicinity. Most of the deaths were due to infectious diseases caused by malnutrition. 
Another important reason for the famine was England's tactic of hindering access to the ports and thus capturing the enemy through starvation. A flu epidemic which spread to the Mediterranean region and Europe led to an incredible number of deaths. 274,000 people only in Italy lost their lives because of the flu. During World War I, a total number of 401,000 Ottoman soldiers died due to infectious diseases. At the end of the war, only 20% of the recruited soldiers were able to return home. The last stop for convoys which took to the road under these conditions was Damascus and Aleppo, located within the Syrian territory today. إلى الأراضي السورية العثمانية تبنت العشائر العربية الموجودة في هذه المناطق عدد كبير من الأرمن أما بالنسبة لعلاقاتهم مع جاليات الأثنيات الإسلامية الموجودة على أرض سوريا منها كان صعب ومنها كان أيضا مبنية على مبدأ أن الإنسان عندما يحتاج المساعدة يجب على أخيه the American Honorary Consul George Young visits the camps to see the status of the Armenians who are relocated in Syria. He talks to Armenians on the move and witnesses the migration routes. He writes about his impressions to Ambassador Morgenthau on September 20th, 1915. Misery, poverty, famine, and the ones who are not able to walk, the torture of the guardians, the kidnappings of the young women, the sale of young lads. Many similar stories circulate, but I don't believe any of these. Even today, I'm certain that the most horrible stories are the most exaggerated. I visited this place to have an idea of the conditions. It is a vast field with only a couple of trees here or there. An officer greeted me at the entrance that guided me to the person in charge of the camp. He was very kind. There were 2,000 Armenians in the camp that day. 20,000 Armenians living in various cities except Van have passed through this camp to Damascus. There was a hospital for the ill. Let us go a little further north to examine the allegations that Armenians were destroyed on the migration routes. The city of Trabzon on the Black Sea coast. Whispers of Armenians being killed were circulating in the city. The German consul, Bergfeld, takes the United States consul, Oskar Heiser, with him and sets off with the purpose of investigating the allegations on location. The German consul, Bergfeld, tells about his observations in the report he wrote to the German emperor, Wilhelm II, on July 25, 1915. A speculation began to circulate about the killing of Armenians after they were transported from Trabzon, and that there were piles of corpses around the city where the Deirmendere River which goes 100 kilometers inward from Trabzon, reaches the sea. Fantasies of hostility that were being fed towards the Turks were taking a life of their own in difficult to believe ways. I briefed the governor to protect the Turkish sensitivities. Governor wholly accepted our intention and our plan to investigate the situation as impartial witnesses with our American colleagues. We have roamed around on horses for four hours alongside the Deirmendere River on the 17th of this month. We found a corpse that we suspect might have been in the water about seven days. It would have been impossible for thousands of corpses to be swept by the tide to the sea before our visit, because the Deir Mendere has very little water. Meanwhile, we have received the news that the highest number of people who were deported the first day have reached Erzinjan without any casualties. Therefore, I find the claims that are made about the atrocities against the Armenians who were transported to Trabzon not true, and I accept the possibility that the Armenians who were found dead on the road died from diseases and suicide. The British, American, and Ottoman official documents confirm the figures in these narratives. According to these documents, 382,000 of the 440,000 people who were transported reached their new settlements. Moreover, this number is given as 500,000 people in American documents. 
Besides, the chairman of the Armenian Protestants told the U.S. Ambassador Morgan Thau that the relocation process was completed without incident. They settled and started their businesses. Now, which is a religious association or group is an organization founded by President Wilton in 1918. And it says that 500,000 Armenians from Turkey, they took refuge themselves to Russia when the Russians moved. And again, they say that there are 1,414,000 Armenians alive on December 31, 1921. So the question is, do we, do we trust the official American records, U.S. Senate and Congress unanimously approved, it is there, or do we believe one and a half million Armenians killed by rumor? Which one? The repatriation decree issued by the Ottoman government at the end of the war is an important evidence of the fact that the resolution of relocation was a temporary military measure required by the necessities of the war. Dated December 18, 1918, the decree states that those who wished to return home could come back. Their transportation and supply costs would be covered. Their homes and land would be returned. Bizim Haydar Pasha vanım valisi bunları dedi getirin dedi. Herkesin kendi yerlerine gönderin. Kendi yerlerinde otursunlar. Şimdi sen ziraatçısın ziraatçına bak. Sen sanatkarsın sanatına. Bunları bu şekilde sağladık. Relocation as a preemptive measure of war is a method that many governments resort to in times of war. The American government relocated its citizens of Japanese origin from the Pacific area facing Japan inland to the Mississippi Valley and placed them under scrutiny in concentration camps until the end of the war. Today, the Geneva Convention states that governments have a right to relocate their citizens in case of uprisings. De personnalité suspecte Şüpheli kişilerin uzaklaştırılması her tür savaşta başvurulandılar Fransa'da da 1939'da aynı şey yapıldı. Burada katliam ya da soykırım yani soyun katledilmesinden söz edilmesi mümkün değil. Russia's attack that started on November 1st, 1914, led by the Armenian troops, spread over an area comprising Trabzon, Erzincan, Mush, and Van. The occupation that lasted until 1918 meant unforgettable suffering for all the people who lived in the area. Armenian historian Lalalian, who worked in the Armenian archives, states that under the Dashnaksutian dictatorship, the Armenian population was reduced by 35%, the Turkish population by 77% and the Kurdish population by 98%. The report written by a Dashnak army officer in 1920 calls on the entire humanity for a moment of silence. I exterminated the Turkish population in Bashar Kechar without making any exceptions. One sometimes feels that bullets shouldn't be wasted, so the most effective way against these dogs is to gather whoever survived the clash, dump them in deep holes, and crush them under heavy rocks tossed from above, so they don't exist any longer in this earth. So I did accordingly. I gathered all women, men, and children and took their lives in the deep holes I dumped them into, crushing them with rocks. Zenk kirarel, ana kugarkel, kandel, kadarelov mishark charter, vori artunkum, an kaskats, zaxetink, mir egina gutsunu, vorbes ishagutsun. Girdiler köyün içerisine. Allah, Cenab-ı Allah bir daha o günleri göstermesin. O kılıçları ki böyle kaldırıp çalıyorlardı. O kadınlar, o erkekleri olduğu gibi hepsini çocukları böyle üç aylık filan çocukları böyle atıyorlardı havaya. Havadan gelirken süngüyü tutuyordu. Süngünün ucu batıyordu. Çocuk kuş yavrusu gibi cıgıldayarak yere çarpıp 
Çocuk canını veriyordu. Ne ihtiyar, ne kadın, hiçbir tane bırakmadılar. Hepsini bunları imha ettiler. What was the reason for this very obviously great hate? Ermeni milliyetçiliği dışarıdan gelen bir düşmana karşı bir tepki hareketi olarak doğmamış. Tam tersine dışarıdan gelen düşmanla işbirliği içerisinde birlikte yaşadığı halklara karşı gelişen bir e, hareket olmuştu. I want you to remember the population figures. What we are talking about here is people that wish to overthrow the government and create an apartheid state. A state in which one fourth of the population rules over three fourths of the population. So we are talking actually about something that has nothing to do with democracy or nothing to do with one man, one vote. We're talking about an apartheid state. The program of the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, shortened to Dashnak Zutyan, founded in 1890 in Tbilisi, contained a clause on the subject of terror. The Terror Preparation Committee within the party was created for the task of planning and executing terrorist attacks. Their goal was to draw the attention of the Western public opinion and to achieve a military intervention in Turkey with the help of foreign armies. Cyrus Hamlin has got, uh, in 1895, he wrote in a newspaper uh, in Los Angeles, because an Armenian told him that, that we are going to kill Armenians to create trouble so that the Western powers will, will come. We are desperate. We'll do everything to bring the attention. In 1933, Bishop Turian in New York Cathedral was murdered in front of the people on the Christmas Eve. Martaç dem spanuçunner zara girel yev drank ira gortsela inspes yev menk zamanajin aretsink tsari yev sultani baştonyaneri dem yer menk karoven spanel mi kani borshevik kanzi mi zamanatner yıldız palatun inspes da Aretsink Sultan Abdulhamit Yekror Tihandep. Da Karoğeyink Anel Naev Measnikovi Gamte Lukashini Handep. Denelov Otkeri Dak Rump. Menk Ays Amene Karoğeyink İraganatsnel. Karzumem Karoğeyink İraganatsnel. Sakayn Aştek Mek Harce Araçalum. İnçü, inçer merhimnagan nabadagın u huysere. Menk karzu meyink vor, barçrasnelov mez ağmuk Türkiye'yün ayt ağmuk işin orhif mez bedutünleri uşadırucunu gıdarsınenk debi mez. Karzu meyink te karogeyink ayt pisov stipel nıranç Linel Mikorzik Haykakan Harci Hamar i okut mes. Ajum menk kideng yev kaç desnumenk te nıman miçosnere kaniko pekarşe. Another reason for these murderous activities was the proportion of the Armenian population to the Muslim population in the region where Greater Armenia was to be created. Armenians, even in the city of Bitlis, where they were the most densely populated, comprised only 27.4% of the population. Anadolu'da hiçbir ilde Ermeni nüfus, o ilde yaşamakta olan Müslüman nüfusun yüzde onunu geçmez. Peki yüzde onuna kaç ilde ulaşır ki zaten? Bu da üç ili geçmez. Amerika Birleşik Devletleri'nin Doğu Anadolu'da bir Ermenistan kurma planını gerçekleştirmek için haritayı çizmekle görevlendirdiği General Harbert Anadolu'ya geldiğinde ziyaret ettiği bütün iller sonucunda gözüyle gözlemlediği, gördüğü, aksettirdiği gerçek de budur. İllere dağılmış olmak nüfusun onda biri gibi bir nüfus yoğunluğuyla, gücüyle bir kente hakim olmak mümkün değildi. Olamadılar, işte olamadıkları için inanılmaz katliam yaptılar. Efendim, Ermeniler köyümüzü kırdılar. 
Ben geçim kaldım. Dalgan el efendim, halkım affetin artık. Ne bileyim, dünyayı yine söyleyeceğim onun için. Gitti aşın aklım, gitti bir sene. Geçim böyledim. Elimden gelse hiçbir Ermeni'nin çoluk çocuğunu öldürmem. The course of the war had changed after December 1915. The British Navy and the ground forces could not pass the Chinakale trenches after months of heavy pressure. They left the Dardanelles, leaving thousands of dead bodies of young men from Australia and New Zealand behind. Chinakale'den evlerine yazdıkları binlerce mektuplarda bizi nasıl anlattılar? Ha? Biz bu Türkler kadar mert, biz bu insanlar kadar misal savaş canımızı almaya gelmişler. Kardeşlik dolu, bizi öven binlerce mektup yok mu? Var, hepsi belge değil mi? Bu mektuplar 1915 yılının Nisan ayında yazılmadı mı? Ha? Bu topluma soykırımcı damgasının vurmak istenildiği tarihin aynı dönemde örtüşmüyor mu bunlar? Ha? Ya o mektupları yazan yalancı ya da bunları torunları zaten. Now, the Ottoman army responsible for the defense and security of the capital, Istanbul, could concentrate on the enemy in the east. Troops were moved to the east, whereupon the Russian army had to retreat step by step. Unfortunately, Armenian bands do not refrain from performing their last activities during this process. When the armies came through, they found the wells were full of corpses. They found that their horses couldn't go through the streets because there were piles of dead. I mean, horrible things. But it must be said, when the Armenians who couldn't get away, when the Muslim villagers, the Turkish villagers returned, they killed all them too. There's no question. In revenge, they killed them all. Even Russian officers were infuriated by the actions of the Armenian bands. Russian archives are full of thousands of files against Armenian bandits charged with massacre. Here is one of them. It is the judgment passed by the military court of the Caucasian Army Headquarters. The court of the Army Corps sat on September 10, 1916, and reviewed the case against Seno Aratunyan, Hayek Ahanyan, and others, consisting of eight other suspects, all members of the 3rd and 4th Volunteer Brigades, and found them guilty of raping Kurdish women and girls intentionally torturing and murdering 26 women and children, and sentenced them to death by hanging, and ordered the removal of all privileges. Öldürülen masum insanlar var ama Türklerden de var. Birçok Türk masum insanlar kıtır kıtır kesildiler. Biz insan değil miyiz, hayvan mıyız biz? Her iki yanda birbirlerini öldürüyorlar. Melaike Basan bunları yüz yıl İngilizler kapalı tutar. Yüz yıl. Bekleyeceksin. Yani İngiltere'nin çıkarlarına tesir eden herhangi bir şeyi İngilizler ya söküp alırlar dosyalardan. Ben kendim gördüm, gittim, gördüm dosyaları hepsini de. Ya söküp çıkarırlar. Yahut da bir yana koyarlar ve derler, not to be opened yet. Bazen de gözlerinden kaçıyor, gözlerinden kaçanların fotokopilerini çıkarırım ben ve kullanırım. Ama bazı top secret belgeler hala kapalıdır. Hala kapalıdır. İngiltere'yi suç. Geçmişte İngilizlerin, Fransızların, Rusların, Almanların şu topraklar üzerinde oynamış oldukları rol neyse bugün aynen tekrardan. Geçmişte Ermeni halkı onlara güvendi. Kendilerini Osmanlı'nın zulmünden kurtaracak. Ama yanıldılar. Çünkü onlar geldiler, 
kendi işlerini, kendi hesaplarını yaptılar, çekilip gittiler ve burada kardeşi kardeşle kan içerisinde. The report presented by one of the Red Army commanders, Mikhail Vasilyevich, on February 2nd, 1922, summarizes everything. The unattainable dream of Armenia from sea to sea was indoctrinated to the Armenian nationalists by none other than the Entente forces. Due to their relationship with the Entente forces, blood overflowed from the fields and the mountains of Anatolia for three years. And the worst part of it is, that they are trying to hold the one person who should not be held accountable to pay for it. Hazarin Narur Dasnu Tvaganic, Ciro Can, Yegaz Turkiyan, Karogatsov, Hacortok, Yerkutari, Cishtok da Gorzel. Եվ Թուրքերը կրկին կարողացան վերադառնալ իրենց հունին։ Նոր ուժերը, երիտասարդները եւ հայրենասիրության հատված սպաներ կարողացան Անատոլիայում վերակազմավորել բանակը։ Թուրքիայում նոր ուժն ու երանդը դարձյալ վերակազմվեց գիտակցության եւ ինքնուրույն պաշտպանության Բնազդը նորից արտնացավ։ Փոքրասիայում աբական աբահովելու համար Սևրի պայմանագիրը դեմ զենքով պետք է ընդդիմանային եւ պայքարեին։ Հունական ճակատին կենտրոնանալու համար պետք է աբահովին հայկական ճակատ ու հնացածը ի վերջո որբես պետք էր թուրքերի հետ գործ բրնենք եւ պայմանագիր կապեինք ապա շատ բանում կհաղթենք Ոչպա նդան Բալկան ուղքերը ճոք դո զորլամադան հեր դիրի Օսմանդան ճոք կոլա կուրտուլդուլար դա Ermenistan bir türlü tüm Avrupa'nın desteğini aldığı halde bu bağımsız egemen olma konusunu bir türlü gerçekleştiremedi. Bunun temel bir nedeni şudur. Osmanlı topraklarında yaşayamakta olan Ermenilerin Osmanlı Devleti ile bir sorunu yoktur. Özellikle Kafkasya topraklarında yaşamakta olan Ermeniler, Rusların da teşvikiyle Doğu Anadolu'da yaşamakta olan Ermenilerin yaşadığı toprakları da katarak büyük bir Ermenistan kurulacağı vaat eden inanıp Osmanlı Devleti'ne karşı aleyhte ayaklanmaya itildiğinde Osmanlı Ermenilerin büyük bir kısmı buna katılmadılar. Hatta karşı durmaya çalıştılar ve bu direnişi kırmak için Ermeniler Müslümanları değil Ermenileri katletmek üzere dernekler kurdular. Karahaç bunların başında gelir. Karahaç bugünün Asadası gibi bir kuruluştur. Bunları katlederken öldürdükleri her Ermeninin alnına bıçakla kara bir haç çizdiler. There was quite a long list of Armenians who who didn't go along with the Dashnaks. And they would they would come to the rich Armenians and say, "You pay us protection money." In other words, you know, something nasty will happen to you unless you pay. And plenty of Armenians objected to this, and they could see where it was all going to end. Uh, the, the biggest case of all was when they shot the mayor of Van, who was an Armenian, in I think 1912, when he had been saying, "For God's sake, stop all this." <laughs> January 27th, 1973, the Armenian terrorist Migirdic Yanikyan assassinates Turkey's Los Angeles Consul General Mehmet Baydar and his assistant consul Bahadur Demir in a hotel. This incident becomes the start of the assassination of Turkish diplomats. Good evening. The attack came early this morning. 
Three men, calling themselves Armenian revolutionaries, stormed the Turkish embassy in Ottawa. They killed a guard and took a dozen people hostage. Could you tell us what the situation is there right now? Uh, sorry, I can't tell you that, but uh, as you know, we are the Armenian Revolutionary Army. We had occupied the Turkish embassy, and we got the demands. What demands are you making? We want our lands back, and we want the Turkish government to recognize the Armenian genocide in 1950. Can I say I think they're lunatic? They're lunatic. Um, you know, if they get compensation in land, which some of them say they want, they say it, uh, they're going to cause, you know, endless warring in eastern Anatolia, which is bad enough as it is. Um, the efforts they have made over Nagorno-Karabakh um, have cost them so much in the way of economic effort, that the population of Armenia has now dropped by about a million and a half. And you can very well ask, who did more damage to the Armenians, Enver Pasha or Sarkisian? Oh, we want to take Van, you know, Erzurum, Trapzon, all the, all the historic Armenian places. They can't even fill their own place. It's, it's, it's a disease, this sort of thing. I call it diasporitis. America suffers from diasporitis, and these diasporas... I mean, look, my Scotland nearly became independent, which is a ridiculous idea, because of that damned film Braveheart. Uh, these... oh, these diasporas... oh, oh dear, oh dear. The organization responsible for the attacks is the Armenian terrorist organization Asala. The organization escalates its execution steadily in 1980s. They commit 27 assassinations of Turkish diplomats, one after the other. 34 people, including civilians, die in these attacks. August 7, 1982. The attack by Asala that killed eight people in the Essenboa airport was the last straw. A Turkish Armenian, Artin Penik, self immolated in Taksim Square as a protest to the Essenboa attack. The Armenian patriarch at the time, Archbishop Sinor Kalusya, visited Penik in hospital and said, I came to give you my thanks on behalf of the Turkish people and the Armenian community. You have saved our country's and Armenians' honor. Artık tahammülüm kalmadı. Bunlara bir ibret olsun diye. Ve bunlar artık vazgeçsinler dedim. Bak samimi söylüyorum size. Bu emperyalistlerin oyunudur. Bu emperyalistlerin oyunu. Gayeleri bu Ermenileri rahatsız ettirmek. Ve ne bileyim böyle uyurdurmak, öldürmek. Dünya kamuoyunun üstünde Türkiye'yi kötülemek. Bakın ben e, kararım... Bir saniyede değiştirdim. Kararım Fransız konsolosun önündeydi. Çünkü başlangıçlar bunlardan başlandı. Bunlar bir avcılığı için buna göz yumdular ve bu hale getirdiler. This house acknowledged the Armenian genocide of 1915 and condemned this act as a crime against humanity. All those in favor of the motion to my left will please rise. I don't believe that someone gets acquitted without a trial, just like they're not convicted without a trial. The issue uh, before us has been characteristically handled by governments or by parliaments, that is, legislative bodies who have no jurisdiction to make adjudicatory decisions. Surely the legislators of the government, not impartial, they're politicians. They're responding to their constituents or campaign contributions. They argue that to participate in the debate is the eighth stage of genocide itself. Can you imagine that? Exercising free speech now becomes the crime of genocide. 153, 153. Nays contre 68, 68. We hear all the time that the, the Turkish government, you, you cannot speak out in Turkey on the genocide. Well, you can, actually. You know, if you want to go to give an interview and say, well, I think there was, no problem. Try saying this in America or Canada or Australia. England, you can't. Bravo! 
İsviçre'de Ermeni soykırımı emperyalist bir yalandır dediği için yargılanıp davası Avrupa İnsan Hakları Mahkemesi'ne kadar taşınan Doğu Perinçek dün İstanbul'a döndü. Engizisyon! İşçi Partisi lideri Doğu Perinçek, Ermeni soykırımı yoktur demiş, İsviçre hükümeti tarafından hakkında hapis cezası verilmişti. Yalanları duruşmada da çiğnemeye devam ediyoruz. Perinçek, İsviçre'nin temiz başvurusunun üzerine de Avrupa İnsan Hakları Mahkemesi büyük dairede savunma yaptı. Avrupa insanının bilinci 1915 olayları konusunda yasaklarla Kuşatılmamalıdır, karartılmamalıdır. Ahim 2. Dairesi'nin 17 Aralık 2013 günü açıkladığı kararı değerlendiren Perinçek, alınan kararla soykırım iddialarının temelden yıkıldığını söyledi. Avrupa İnsan Hakları Mahkemesi 1915 olaylarının soykırım tanımına girmeyeceği şeklinde çok önemli tarihi bir karar verdi. Evet bu karardan sonra... Hiçbir ülke o, o tür Ermeni soykırımını tanıyan kararlar alamaz parlamentolar. Çünkü kararda şu da ifade ediliyor. Böyle bir konuda kesinlikle parlamentolar yetkili değildir. The Armenians go around and ask and make national parliaments recognize the Armenian genocide because they do not have the kind of historical backing that should be available if one were to consider this issue close and resolved. The Ottoman Empire's U.S. Ambassador Henry Morgenthau, for instance, confirmed that, quote, a campaign of race extermination is in progress against the Armenians. The most important evidence put forward by those who claim that Armenians suffer genocide is the memoirs of Henry Morgenthau, the United States Ambassador to the Ottoman Empire at the time. It has even been claimed that this book itself is an indictment against Turks. The most untrustworthy type of source we have in general are memoirs. People who write their own life stories. It's very hard to be objective about yourself. The memoirs, which have been used as a reference by hundreds of books claiming that a genocide was committed, were turned into a book by the journalist Burton Hendrick in 1918. The actual authors of the book were American embassy employees, Arsak Simovanyan and Agop Andonian. Morgenthau was a complex man. He made a lot of money in real estate in New York by speculating on where the metro lines would be. I say speculating, they probably had some inside knowledge. And then buying up properties where they thought that stations would be because they knew the value would go up. His entry into politics is really centered around the campaign of Woodrow Wilson for president in 1912. He was Wilson's fundraising campaign manager. That is, he raised the money that helped Wilson get elected. The first scholarly criticism came from the United States historians Sidney Brashaw Fay and Harry Elmer Barn in 1920s. According to them, these memoirs that had been turned into a book had not one true word in them, and it is a completely fabricated tale. The book is almost a work of fiction. He writes things one way in his diary, but they appear in the book in exactly the opposite way. This is a bad book, Ambassador Morgenthau's story, and it should be put aside and left out of the dialogue, out of the discussion. In its place, what we need, and I made a strong case for that here as well, is the opening of archives. The book was presented as evidence for the first international investigation examining the genocide claim. At the end of the war, the British, who had occupied Istanbul, sent 144 Ottoman authorities to the island of Malta as war criminals. Between 1919 and 1921, British Royal Prosecutor General's Office in Propria Persona Leads the investigation. O kadar titiz bir çalışma ki bugün dünyadaki Ermeni soykırım iddialı temel dört referans kitabın hepsi otorite yazılmış ve İngiliz Kraliyet Başsavcısı'nın elinde. Mavi kitap, Morgenthau'nun anıları, Andonium belgeler. Ama İngiliz Kraliyet Başsavcısı bu kitaplar gözden geçirildiği zaman bunların hepsini dedikodu. Herhangi bir İngiliz mahkemesinde dikkate alınabilecek hüküm tesis etmek için yeterli olmayan delil nitelemesinde bulunuyor. However, the British Foreign Ministry at the time, which insists on prosecuting the Ottoman authorities, asked for an investigation of American documents too. İngiliz e, Büyükelçiliği Amerika'daki 
Amerikan arşivine bizzat kendisi biliyor. Ama çıkışta Dışişleri Bakanlığı'na gönderdiği yazı maalesef bir mahkemede kullanılabilecek hiçbir belge yok. The case is completely political because when it comes to historical facts, the British Foreign Minister Lord Curzon says, the fact that Armenians were not innocent lambs and they have committed vicious attacks has been proven with documents. After all, they were in occupation of Constantinople for over four years. The Ottoman archives were accessible to them. They had uh, Armenian secretaries who could who could read them. And uh, nobody turned up with anything. And then the issue got muddied, of course, by uh, forgeries of people like Adonian turning up. Mr. President, I would like to introduce Mr. Jeffrey Robertson, QC, and then Mrs. Amal Clooney, who will present further submission on behalf of Armenia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kostanyan. I give the floor to Mr. Robertson. Mr. President, honorable judges, the object of the Ottoman Empire in 1915... I mean, I recently reviewed a book by uh, an Anglo-British lawyer called Geoffrey Robertson. Okay? And Robertson is, was, I think, hired by the Armenian lobby in London some time ago to, you know, to kind of persuade the British government to change their position. Now he's written a book on the whole issue. No, and which has been, you know, kind of brilliant, you know, forensic work, irrefutable evidence, blah, blah, blah, blah. Now here's a man who can write of, 19, of 1915 of prisoners being transported from Istanbul to Ankara by ship. That's absurd. <laughs> He's holding something in his hand, you can't see what it is. And as I said, around him there are a circle of people, you know, they're kind of very poorly dressed um, women and children lying on the ground. All of them got their arms outstretched. Then when I turned the photograph from the court for light, I could see that there seemed to be a line running through the man's jacket. And for example, there was a boy lying on the ground. And when I looked at the length of his arm, if the arm were laid down the length of his body, it would almost reach to his toes. And so then so there seemed to be something wrong with the background behind the man who was standing. So altogether, it didn't seem to me to be a genuine photograph. He blew up the pixels. He blew them up 20, 2,400 times. So the pictures came out like little crosses. It took him about 20 minutes, half an hour to do this. And then he said, finally, well, this of course is not genuine photograph. He said, because the pixels would have to be homogenous. And we can see from here that they're going in different directions all over the place. So this so-called photograph has actually been put together. It's a collage. Rumors and propaganda materials are plenty, but the most objective and authentic document about the matter is as follows. The General Harvard Report. It is the year 1919. The First World War has ended and the representatives of 32 states have got together in Paris. The agenda of the conference is how to share the pillage. The idea of establishing an Armenian state under American mandate in eastern Anatolia becomes an issue. 
The President of the United States at the time, Thomas Woodrow Wilson, decides to send a committee to Eastern Anatolia under the leadership of former Chief of Staff Major General James Harbord on August 1, 1919, to examine if this was possible. Before leaving, General Harbord has one-to-one -one private meetings with the people who were in favor of Armenia at the conference. However, he sees that the knowledge of these people claim to be experts on the case regarding the Middle East is no more than what the books and the propaganda material contained, especially when the head of the Armenian committee, Bogos Nubar Pasha, admits that he has never been to Armenia. The general cannot hide his surprise. However, General Harbord wants to be objective when he is performing his office. He doesn't hesitate to mention his prejudice stand at the beginning and says, as we're starting off, we are really expecting to see in Armenia and massacres. The delegation of 46 people consisting of military and civilian experts first go to Istanbul on a military ship. Their second stop is Adana, which they reach by the Baghdad Railway. Their later destinations are Aleppo, Mardin, Diyarbakir, Harput, Malatya, Sivas, Trabzon, Erzincan, Erzurum, and Kars. Contrary to their concerns for safety, their visit to Anatolia is undertaken safely. There are even special welcoming ceremonies for them in many places. led by General Harbert visits Armenia after Kars, which was their last stop in Anatolia, and speaks with the Armenian clergy and officials in Armenia. Unfortunately, this country is not safe like Turkey. Their car is assaulted with gunfire. More than half of the delegation are taken hostage for one night. This situation and the existence of government authority and security in Anatolia is noted in the report. During the 30-day visit, General Harbard has discussions with the locals, mostly. In Afyon, he is even greeted personally by the Armenian community leaders. Harbord conducts surveys on the Armenian Christian congregation. At every opportunity, he meets with people who have migrated from the area due to official relocation and who later returned. Finally, he prepares a 29-page report to be presented to the American Congress. He was most affected by the hunger and poverty of the Armenians, Kurds, and Turks in the area. There are no doctors or medicine. According to his report, this is the reason for the high mortality rate. As a result of the research, he has come to think that there has never been an Armenian majority in the region. The mission has not seen any genocide against the Armenians or any preparation for it. On the contrary, based on their own observations, General Harbert notes that the Armenians in the border area are allowed into Turkey, provided that they prove they are Turkish Armenians. General Harbert was sent here to get uh, Armenia under uh, American protection. He had to write that he saw the Armenian armies given orders to kill Turks. General Harbert's report. What do you want? There's a truth here. An irre irrevocable truth right, that you cannot be allowed to challenge. Facts are in the archives of countries. Yet, the sources that can prove who was responsible and what went on in Anatolia in 1915 are still kept under lock and key. The Armenian Archives. We have uh, two uh, important Armenian archives abroad. We have the Bogostuba Library in Paris, and you have the uh, Armenian Revolutionary Federation Archives. Uh, close to Boston in Waterton, just just the next door of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So, in, to, in June 2012, I sent an email to Raymond Kevorkian, who is the curator of Bogus to Bar Library. No reply. Before going to the US this year, 2014, I sent an email to the head of the Armenian Revolutionary Federation's Archive Institute. No reply. I resent the email some days later. No reply. When I was in Washington area, I sent an email to Dikran Kaligian, who is an American scholar affiliated with the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, to ask, this is what happened. Do you have any uh, help to provide? To provide? And uh, no reply. 
When I was in Boston, finally I called uh, the Armenian Revolutionary Federation's Archive Institute, no reply. The first Prime Minister of the First Republic of Armenia and the leader of the Armenian Revolutionary Federation at the time, Ovanis Kachaz Nuni, wrote a critical report for the April 1923 ARF convention in Bucharest, which was kept hidden for years. It was collected from the libraries and destroyed for good. Those who brought this vital document back to the attention of the public were prudent and fair Armenians. In 1955, Armenians who were disturbed by the hostile conduct of the Dashnaks published the report as a booklet. In 1989, I met a man who I didn't realize was 100 years old. He ended up being Mr. Albert Amato in Turkish, Ibrahim Suseva. He had seen much of the Armenian independence movement's uh, final stages. And he gave me a book, actually a booklet. This publication was a uh, translation of a manifesto by the prime minister of the short-lived Armenian Republic. Many of the people who did the work to find this document, to translate it, to publish it in 1955, uh, used non-Armenian names. Uh, there were Armenians who used non-Armenian names to protect themselves. It's a secret for them, for the Armenian Americans who don't want to be harassed, who don't want to be given second-class citizenship in their churches. They were trying to appeal to the intelligentsia to say, don't be duped by the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. Uh, this is a multifaceted, complex uh, problem for which the blame is due to many groups, particularly the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. Kachaz Nuni's analysis about the biggest Armenian uprising is sufficient to shed light on what actually happened in 1915. In Mutkeris Mech Hazaravor Kaminerin Ansnum. Mer Madaz Ait Hypnozain Vijagits Wach Iraganutuno Skasetink Stester. Turkian der Cher Madel, Yev der Cher Badrastum Madnel Urish Kervo, Yer Gerneri Gazmi Mech Azarin Naharu Tasnichos Twagani Wach Ashtar Yerp Anter Kokazits Kasvets Mets Agnuk Yo Yev Mets Kandavarutian Sukhsvetin Stevzwell Haikakan Kamavoragan Chokatnere Mink Anvera Pahoren Kavvetink Rosastanin Britana Tineri Gol Mits Pavaganin Lav Kaketsvats Yev Zimbats Banakuning Mink Yevi Vercho Anjavana Kahat Vazi Hamar Pavaganin Mi Hasarak Tikatori Ajek Chunetso Sevri Paimanagira Vor Mink Pavaganin Lav Okta Gorzu Mink Turkeri Dem Iprev Hakta Tukt Ait sevri baymana gire, ambohça bez kuratreler mer açgere. Sorunlar bu topraklarda başladı. Dış müdahalelere maruz kaldı ve bugünlere gelindi. Ancak bu kez dış müdahaleler olmadan sorunların başladığı yerde çözümü için yeterince tecrübemiz var. Niyetimiz olduğunu da sergiliyoruz. Einstein'ın şu sözü ne kadar çok şey anlatıyor. Sorunlar onları yaratanların mantığı ile çözümlenemez. Thank you.